Hello there my fellow Holotable heroes and welcome to another Galactic Challenge video. As you see I'm back home so I'm giving you the B Dynasty experience that you've come to expect from me. Now because it's Friday, yeah you guessed it, uh, another Inquisitor Challenge. Now unlike the past few ones, this one does have the return of the Purge feed. So in order to get the Gold Crate you'll have to put a little bit more effort than uh, before. As always I cover the modifiers and the feats and then show you the battles that allowed me to unlock the gold crate i have four battles in total for you so first i'll kick off uh, with the troopers and also ray jedi training resistance team uh, these teams can get you on tier 10 quite easily the no tanks feed then i'll hop over to tier 6 to do the full inquisitor uh, battle with my low gear inquisitors and then i'll finish off the video uh, by completing uh, the purge feed on tier 9 that will unlock the gold crate for me Alright, but otherwise, let's just get started here uh, with the Safe Heaven, that's the global modifier for Tekunana. Now, this is a bit tricky one, I guess, uh, just because whoever deals damage first gets death mark inflicted on them, and then when that uh, unit gets defeated, then whoever deals damage next gets death mark as well on them. So, it's something you have to kind of work around uh, as you're going through the battle. Uh, the modifier here for uh, Inquisitors, yeah, some stacks of fatigue on the enemies and you get Coupe de Grotten and stuff like that, but uh, as all other Inquisitor challenges, I didn't really feel like uh, this ability kicked off frequent enough to make a whole lot of difference to the outcome of the battle. And then Thrill of the Hunt, the modifier for the Bounty Hunters, they get 9 stacks of true defense, so they'll be very tanky to begin with. And obviously if they do get their contract triggered, then they will also gain Frenzy for one turn. So you definitely will not want them to get a contract, because then they can overrun you because of Frenzy. In terms of the feats, you have to win with a battle with no tanks in your squad. Attempt to inflict Purge 60 times, so you don't need to land it, you just need to attempt to inflict it. And then finally you have to win uh, the battle with a full team of Inquisitor units. Now because my Inquisitors are very bad, the only battles I can do here are tier 10. Uh, is the no tanks feed um, so let's just go ahead and do that um, now the troopers obviously if you do have dark trooper do use him i just wanted to show you for those of you that don't have maybe dark trooper leveled up you don't really need him i think that whichever troopers as long as you got piet in there should be able to get this going just showing the speeds on my piet just that you can see um, that he was able to go first uh, otherwise standard trooper thing you know uh, we already know from grand arena territory wars the troopers are a hard counter to bounty hunters uh, you just get your turn meter train rolling and from there on out you know things are very straightforward you just keep using specials keep those buffs flowing and you know they the enemies never really get a turn i'm um, going after boss next and you know then we'll just be down to m bond that's pretty much it just spinning out the footage it's not really strategy here you just kind of go after mando first because i think he's the squishiest to get your turn meter train rolling and from there on out there you go very very quickly and easily uh getting the no tank feed down or tier 10. Uh, another optional team here that I also came up with was obviously Ray with the resistance droids and then resistance trooper because with resistance trooper he'll keep getting so many turns every time you expose he can keep uh, spamming special and with Ray uh, in there whenever you do your special ability all the exposed enemies will be losing 5% turn meter that cannot be resisted so this will allow you to kind of you know keep your turn meter train rolling keep a little bit pushing their turn meter back uh, especially make sure that you do have exposed there on grief because he's in stealth you can't really target him but at least like this you'll be able to keep pushing his turn meter back but otherwise you just kind of want to a little bit uh, spread the exposes all around so then whenever you do hit special abilities you keep pushing back turn meter so very straightforward team to run as well uh, Ambo a little bit is a trickier one because you can't critically hit him so the only way to land exposes on him is with illuminated destiny and then as well basic from resistance trooper and C for APL. But as you can see, I'm already on second uh, Illuminated Destiny. At this point, I just hit autoplay. It's pretty much in the bag, very easy here and straightforward. Uh, probably CLS and a bunch of other teams can get this done. These are just the two teams I kind of, you know, tried out uh, very, very easily done just because of that Terminator train that they both have. Now let's hop over to tier 6 and get the full Inquisitor feed done. As always, I just like to go with Fifth Brother Lead for some extra uh, defense and health. And then also whenever you do your special abilities, you'll be landing uh, Purge on the enemies. Now, the way I slightly remodded here just because of the death mark was causing some issue and then Griffin stealth. 
so what I've done was I made Fig Brother to be the fastest so he can go ahead use his AoE uh, and dispel all the buffs on the enemy so we can then pull out Greed out of stealth and then obviously we can use this special ability from Second Sister uh, to stun uh, either Bosk or Grief and then the other one, uh, the was it Seven Sister, she's got a special ability that can also ability block. Yeah, there she is. So you kind of want to use those ability blocks and as well as stuns to keep Bosk and Grief under control because Bosk can cleanse himself while Grief can cleanse everybody. So as long as you keep those two guys under control, I think he, you know, it's quite doable here. You may need to run it a couple of times, but otherwise, pretty straightforward. Make sure to get Purge on uh, Grief there, uh, as well as Bosk, just so you can, you know, start landing those debuffs. There you go, I ability block their Grief, push back his turn meter. Now I need to turn attention over to uh, Bosk, and that's why I made my second sister to be the slowest. Uh, just so that boss had a lot of uh, stacks of purge uh, so then you know i was able to land that stun reliably so there we go we got boss stunned uh, we've got grief there ability block so things are looking good okay well this is a bit of rng because of the death mark but as long as enemies kind of keep targeting more ninth sister than your fifth brother you should be good to go we also got here uh, some foresight it will allow us to evade some attacks as well uh, kind of going after Django first, I guess he's the biggest threat, I think, in terms of the damage output. They will never get to get contract, so you don't need to worry about Manda too much getting his disintegrate out, I think. Otherwise, just keep uh, spamming special here, getting that purge uh, spread, keep these guys under control. Uh, going after Bosk next. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, here we go. Get a stun on Bosk as well. Uh, obviously grief might get a turn in here so we'll just go ahead get some foresight going okay there we go looks like grief called people to assist but mando was stunned uh, sorry was dazed boss was stunned so nothing there then let's get grief out before he uses his uh, dispel and from here on out you know it's a pretty safe forward without jungle they don't have a whole lot of damage Grief out as well, boss under control. So there you go, I was able to get this done. I think I need like three or four attempts uh, to get this done. So it wasn't as straightforward because of that death mark, but still, you know, it was pretty straightforward in the end after I remoted to get the correct turn order. All right, so this will now give you the silver crate. If um, you're happy with your two Omicrons there, you don't want to bother with trying to cheese the Perch Feet or Tier 9, you can just, you know, take it and enjoy the, your weekend. If you do want to a little bit, go over to Tier 9, try to get the Gold Crate and Perch Feet. Uh, I'm going to Palpatine lead, I remoted him to be 260 plus speed and as well potency, so he can land those stuns. I'm um, bringing Gideon his 365 speed, that's more than enough that he will go first. And the reason why I'm bringing Gideon is so he can control situation, push back Terminator on the enemy, uh, and then this will uh, allow Palpatine to outrun Bosk so he can get his stuns going. Obviously, I tried to sweep with Mara Jade instead of Grief, but I just killed them too fast. I wasn't able to delay the battle enough to get the purge feed done. So I decided to try this, and this worked. I needed a bit, I think, about seven or eight attempts just to get enough stuns here <laughs> with Palps in beginning. Uh, but as long as you get these guys stunned, even though boss there, it doesn't matter because you know everybody else is stunned, so he can't really do much. Or he's stuck behind his stone now, but I can go ahead dispel all of that shenanigans. And now let's try and keep grief under control. Um, there we go. We can now go ahead and stun boss. Oh, resisted. All right. Oh well, at least we push back some turn meter. Okay, just keep uh, spreading that purge. Okay, so the goal here is. That you've got at all times at least two that you got two enemies shocked so then whenever pulps uh, has his um uh, ability there uh, that uh, kind of gets uh, takes some health away from everybody he will gain 100 percent turn meter which he gains 50 percent turn meter for each shock so this will allow pulps to get lots of turns very very quickly so there we go i can go ahead use it again an immediate turn for pulps as well so he can get quick uh, a lot of turns so he can keep uh, mass stunning everybody so this is a bit of RNG with these stuns, uh, so I said I need I think 7 or 8 attempts to get enough stuns, but there we go, we got everybody stunned now. Uh, also with the purge, uh, just make sure that you um, use those special abilities that consume purge. Uh, both sisters, they have one ability that consumes the purge, um, because obviously once somebody reaches 6 stacks of purge, you won't be able to apply anymore. So you definitely have to way of uh, consuming purge so you can keep reapplying it, because obviously you do have to get uh, 60 there. 
Uh, you can also make use of uh, both, obviously, there, Mando and Django. Uh, if you defeat them, they've got Bounty Hunter Resolve. Uh, they will die off and obviously come back without purge as well so you can kind of use their revives as well as an additional way of getting re rid of six stacks of purge and from here on out you know got things under control here there you go getting that uh, extra turns for pops really helps um so he, and as well then with gideon sometimes uh, you can also use control situation again as well uh, to get out of the pickle um, and from here out, you know, Bosk is down, just trying to kind of spread the damage, stall uh, everything, the battle, long enough. Because without Fit Tracker, again, you have no idea how many purges you've done so far. Um, as mentioned before, I wasn't able to quite get it with Mara J there instead of Gideon, um, just because uh, I killed them too quickly before I was able to get purge done. So obviously with Mara in there, uh, Pops will be getting less turns, so this will give enough time. Uh, for Inquisitors to hopefully get this uh, purge applied 60 times, which will then unlock uh, the gold crate for you. Uh, also worth mentioning that I actually tried as well, uh, you know, the Jenna Master Look, what cheese that we used to use uh, to get purge feed as well here on tier 9, but because both Django and Mando, they can ignore taunt, they were still able to kind of get around and nook my low gear Inquisitors quite often, so it, was also, it I didn't have much success there. But this one with Gideon, I think, you know, it was pretty good in the end for me. Alright guys, hope this video was useful and helpful, showing you how I got gold rewards this time in today's Inquisitor Challenge. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one, but until then, have fun, enjoy your life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.